Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Gen Genesis Model Craft Bench. I'm here tonight to look at, this is going to be part one of my holiday build, the ICM CR42LW, which stands for Luftwaffe. So, you may recall, possibly, hopefully, if uh, for Luftwaffe, so, whoops, you may recall this was going to be my holiday build because I'm rather enamoured with this paint job. So, what appears to be the original Italian camouflage, partially, um, well, almost completely overpainted with various different Luftwaffe colours, squiggles, mockers, splotches, and so on and so forth. As you can see, I have already started on this. So what I've completed up until this moment is I have constructed and painted the basic cockpit parts and the insides of the fuselage half. So I'm just going to zoom this in very slightly. It's a bit easier to see. So I see I've done a really great job here actually of, of recreating the sort of tubular structure. This, this is being a uh, quite a late biplane fighter. I mean, this this comes from the camp of what I like to consider as kind of sturdy biplanes. You've got some biplanes that look like if you breathe on them too hard, they'd fall to pieces. But then you've got things like the Gladiator and the Steerman, um, the Swordfish, things like that that is, that almost look more rugged than metal aeroplanes of the, of the period. This comes pretty much comes under that criteria for me and obviously was uh, an aluminium or steel tubular design with fabric covering. So they've done quite a nice job of integrating that into this design and so up to now what I've done is assembled these parts I've painted them in RLM 65 the instructions state light grey I looked at some photographs of a real one and it looked a bit bluish so I've sprayed it RLM 65 if that upsets anyone I'm sorry uh, and after I've done that I've added the kit included decals to the instrument panels and various portions of the sidewalls. Now these were an absolute joy to use. The, um, they were clumped together on the decal sheet as though they were one decal which is what we would obviously be used to with instrument panel uh, decals from any other manufacturer I can think of to be honest. Um, but when they were wetted they were actually all separate solo dials. So each one was fitted individually, one by one, and the carrier film on them was virtually zero. There was it was so minimal as to be. You see, there's two dials down there near the rudder pedals, so so minimal as to be just not there and not anything that needed to be worried about certainly. So those were added this morning, and once they were on, I put a light coat of X22 clear. Tamiya gloss. This is thinned with Mr. Colour Thinner. It's very important if you're going to use X22 gloss for anything that you thin it with Mr. Colour Thinner. If you don't thin it with Mr. Colour, honestly, it's utter garbage. Please don't put yourself through the pain. Use Mr. Colour Thinner. Uh, when you do that, we're talking for this purpose roughly 50 50, one part thinner, one part uh, clear lacquer. Uh, it transforms the paint into something so wonderful it's absolutely amazing. The difference between with and without Mr Colour Thinner is night and day, I trust, trust me. So what I'm going to do now, initially I'm going to put a little bit of wash onto these cockpit parts now. So as I say, they've been painted, they've been cleared, they're not super glossy, they don't need to be. Uh, this is MIG Productions Neutral Wash, which is essentially just exactly what it says on the on the pot. It's just a, a mid-brown with a slightly grey tone uh, wash colour. It's an enamel wash uh, and it's I, I like it. It's very good. I'm going to put a bit of that on. Then I'm going to completely change tack while that dries and, and look at the undercarriage parts with you. And then I'll clean the wash off. And assemble the rest of this cockpit and if none of that takes too long I might stick the fuselage house together as well but we'll see how long it takes I don't want to be on the air for hours and hours mostly because it takes forever to for the video to render <laughs> and make itself available so anyway let's get going 
going to put some of the wash off. I've never been one for doing this kind of thing. I always thought it was a bit faffy. But I attended a um, how to do modelling day with Mr. Mig Jimenez a few years back. Uh, and I learned an awful lot from the man. And one of those things was putting the, the product into these dishes. Because it does separate quite quickly. You shake it up ready for use. It really doesn't take very long for it to separate back down into its constituent parts so it means you're constantly having to put the lid back on and shake it whereas if you stick the wash into a dish like this you, you just stir it back up again with your brush. So all I'm going to do is just lightly touch the areas that I want to delineate with the wash. How's that for a word eh? Monday evening, big word, delineate. That's all I'm using this wash for. I'm not trying to create weathering effects. I simply want to make the built-in detail pop, for want of a better word. So I'm just, I've not got a massive amount of product on the brush and I'm just touching it, tapping the parts almost in the areas where I want the wash to flow out around the details probably too far away isn't it let me zoom in a bit more for you and I'll try and work where the camera can see me like so the wash will flow around things it's quite light bodied this wash things like the ammo of MIG panel line washes tend to, to I find to be a little heavier than this one um, and they sometimes don't really flow as well as these do obviously if it's not flowing well enough it can be thinned a little more with enamel thinners. It's hopefully fairly obvious. Oh I've done that right off camera haven't I? What a muppet. There we go. See how that's just flowed around all of that raised detail and it will make it much easier to see. Now on the seat back, this is the seat back. The seat, I did a little research, I'm sorry I can't help myself. The seat itself is made from steel, it's made from steel armour plate all welded together. Interesting idea. So what I'm going to do with this after I've washed it is I'm going to do a bit of steel chipping. need to build some seat belts too because the kit does not include any. But clearly if one has less patience, although having less patience than me would be a bit of a miracle. You, you can just paint this on all over the whole thing with gay abandon frankly because it will wipe off quite happily because we've got that clear coat on there. It's perfectly valid and possible to use these washes without any clear coat at all especially over an acrylic uh, paint. They will You can do it over lacquer paints as well it won't wipe them off but um, the difference is if you don't have that clear coat there with that slight satin finish the, the wash will tend to stain the colour, the underlying colour to an extent that's quite difficult to remove especially if you just paint the whole thing with wash and I have found to my cost in the past that um, excessive use of enamel thinners and indeed um, turpentine on plastic kits can have quite an unfortunate uh, effect on their structural soundness so I would advise against flooding things overly unless uh, you particularly want a very dirty result. Maybe when I've done enough of these videos I'll remember to work where the camera can see me. 
maybe you'll just have to put up with not being able to see what I'm doing most of the time for the rest of my days right then here we've got the upper deck forward fuselage upper deck which includes focus thank you gun sight detail at the back edge of it which is built on there which is very nice Choice of wash colours are a very personal thing. Uh, you you could uh, very happily use a darker wash than this, even though this is a fairly pale colour. Um, because of the enhanced contrast that you actually want to achieve in a cockpit area, because it's not lit in there, you could very happily use a darker colour if you were of that bent. Um, I'm not personally, but I think it would be equally um, valid to use, say, for example, the ammo panel line wash blue black colour would work quite well with with this base colour. See, so they're just painting it off. Thing with wash application you know as I say you can just paint it on all over the whole thing downside with doing that is it takes a very long time to clean it all off and leave only what you actually wanted there in the first place you could also spend an awful lot longer than I am very carefully and precisely placing the wash exactly where you want it this would leave you with minimal cleanup but obviously takes a lot longer to actually apply the wash so it swings around about really there we go now the best for best results I think uh, with this kind of wash um, it needs to be not fully dry before you try and take it off but certainly well on the way it's fully dry when you try to take it off it will leave that little staining effect that I mentioned if it's too wet you'll just kind of move it around on the surface of the model and it is just plain irritating to get it off so we're going to leave this for long enough that the wash has a matte appearance so it's not fully dry but the the main percentage of the um, thinner element of the wash is evaporated so whilst it's doing that I'm going to talk about the undercarriage pieces that I was working on earlier and what I've been doing to those so if you look at the artwork for this this version here you can see it's got semi spatted wheels it's not a full spat the spat being the aerodynamic fairing that covers the actual wheel and tyre assembly that's a partial spat on that um, there is also the option within the kit for the second version to have a completely unspatted undercarriage so you've still got the leg fairing in place but the wheel and tyre are not covered at all had I the option it's unfortunately not included in the kit but I would have opted for the fully spatted uh, wheel and tyre assembly because like to be honest that's my preference aesthetically uh, i don't like particularly aesthetically speaking that the semi-spatted undercarriage that this version is supposed to have so what i'm going to do is go my own way and i'm going to have the the fared leg but but unfaired wheel arrangement 
because those parts are included in the kit where are my nippers there they are so these were just roughly chopped off earlier and I have removed the sprue stubs and gotten on with this one and what I've done I've taken the wheels these were glued together the other day and I drilled through the mounting points the mounting points on the leg are just these two my word camera come on come on there we go just these two stubs on the inside these sort of rounded spurs which fit into moulded recesses in the wheel hub and what I did was I drilled through those from each side and the wheels can now be slid onto this piece of 1.5mm brass tube like so and, what, and then I will drill through these, these attachment points with the appropriate size drill bit to fit the brass tube which slides into these which I believe off the top of my head is 0.8mm um, so that I can assemble the undercarriage in a sort of prototypical fashion and not have to be trying to spread these legs to fit the wheel and tire assembly because firstly that you run a, a great risk of, of damaging overstressing the undercarriage fork by doing that and secondly you almost always knock the paint off as you're doing it so I decided to uh, uh, and another consideration honestly is that this plastic is quite flexible so that is a slightly st more structurally st sound arrangement shall we say so this one's been assembled into its wheel fairing and what I've decided what I decided to do when I was looking at it if I just place this one together you can see how there's a, a recess there for the undercarriage leg to sit. You see the tabs in there where the undercarriage leg itself glues in. And then it's quite thick. So what I've done, and I'll show you again now, is I've carved away the plastic on the inside here so that it's thin like it should be. This isn't a thick structural thing. This is literally just an aerodynamic fairing around the leg, which is why I've done that. And how I did that is very, very simple. Using your pointed scalpel, not the rounded end, it's ever so simple. Using the dimple where the leg sits as a guide to depth, just carefully, gently, slowly, as slow as you need to, take an angle, roughly 45 degrees, initially and just slice it away like this taking care to get the shape correct to follow the line of the outer surface once the most of it is gone like this you can now see there's a nice angle there then take an, a more acute angle of the towards the bottom part of this to make that final radius towards the outside of the kit part and that gives the appearance of being very thin even though it is actually not and once that's in place and you're happy you can then go with a shallower angle towards the top the top part of the cut which allows it to have a uh, when when viewed from underneath it just looks deeper so it doesn't look like what you've done is cut the plastic away at an angle it's cheating but it works Ugh, fumble fingers as you can see look at the difference it looks far more like it should in my opinion and is the work of mere moments. So I did that to those and as I said I shall drill these axle stubs through. I, I will, well I'll do it now. These internal parts just get cut off because there's no need to drill through them because I don't even want them to be there. Let's cut those away. But leave circle detail on the outside of the leg because you need that to guide 
as a guide for where to actually drill. And when you're ready to drill, use something pointed. I have a Plus Models pointed scribing tool. Use a pin, a needle in a pin vise, anything you like, something pointed. And stick yourself a drill guide. And what I mean by that is make it an indent in the centre of this axle detail, this moulded on axle stub. You want to make a fairly generous divot in the middle of that to give yourself a guide to drill to. It's quite important with things like this that you actually do this because even if you're the best driller in the world um, if you make a tiny mistake here you'll end up when you fit your wheel you'll end up with a wheel that sits like this and looks silly <laughs> it needs to be straight so take that extra three take that extra 10 seconds and give yourself a guide if you can't get things in the middle then probably just leave it alone and put it together as I see intended there's no there's no shortcut for this you either got you can either write things up or you can't but there we go there's a nice pronounced center punch if you like but for your drill bit to to follow when it's drilled out uh, please don't actually center punch your plastic parts because you will break them let's put those back and let's look at getting this wash sorted out so wash removal tools, cotton buds, a nice somewhat pointed paintbrush that's not too big and not too small. Let's go for a smallish one because we're working on smallish parts. Paintbrush, you'll need some tissue. Oh no, destroying the place. Everything's falling down. Far too much stuff in here. Some tissue, paper. This is kitchen roll, ordinary kitchen roll. And your chosen removal media. There's two things you can use to do this with these washes. You can use the odourless turpentine, or if you insist, you can use turpentine with an odour or enamel thinners. Doesn't really matter which. Bring back the little palette a little bit of thinners into one of the dishes okay so on things like this seat I'm not going to use the paintbrush because all I want to do is just gently just blend it I want to leave the majority of the wash actually on the surface so that it looks dirty so all I'm doing is blending it so it doesn't look as though it was just painted on. And that's that done. Easy as that. Now for things like this, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use your cotton bud and simply wipe. And you should find that the wash will stay in those recesses. You're not going to pull it out using a dry cotton bud. If the wash is just dry but not completely dry it will come off quite easily as this is doing and it should leave you with a nice highlighted bit of detail. What are we on? 23 minutes yeah I'll be finishing after I've done this like so. See how it's just lifted that band, it's that much more visually obvious than it was before. And the finishing touch here is that you can lightly dry brush this and it will just pop that band even more, the, the fixing band. Same on this instrument panel again. I think the, the most efficacious method on, on this, on this size of a part, is just gently Rub across it with this, this completely dry cotton bud. 
and it's picking up the wash that's on top of everything but leaving behind the wash that's sitting around the outside of these this bezel detail and this serves a couple of purposes for this particular part firstly it pops the detail again makes it that much easier to see secondly I can now paint around those bezels with much less accuracy because the the part where they're actually connected to the panel is already highlighted so I don't need to be super accurate with the paint the other way of doing it <coughs> is to use your pointed brush the brush needs to be able to come to a point it doesn't matter if it's large or small really but it needs to be able to come to a point it's best not to use completely tiny brushes because they won't hold enough thinners to do the job so moisten the brush with thinners dab it off on the paper towel so that most of the thinners is gone you only want a moist brush you don't want a soaking wet brush and we blend the beauty of this is the accuracy the level of accuracy you can bring to where your wash ends up and how the finished effect looks is astonishing the downside is that it takes ages it's super fiddly uh, and gets boring real quick we're just using an, a damp brush effectively and the wash is right at that nice stage you could call you would call it green if it was filler am I working off camera again it's just at that nice stage so that this moistened brush will happily just drag the wash off where you don't want it without creating a horrible mess if you tried to do this while the wash was still wet you would end up just pushing it around the part and not getting anywhere quickly extra bonus with using this method when working on the outside of the model is the ease with which you can create streaking really natural streaking with this excess wash that you're pulling away and every few moments you just rinse the brush off in that thinners and dab it back on the towel again to clean it like so it gives an effect somewhat like the old Spanish school style of sort of super sharp highlighting rather than when you use the cotton bud but whether you use the cotton bud damp or dry you tend to get quite a nice sort of feathered finish and everything the uh, using the paintbrush gives you much much sharper edges on everything because you're, you're, you're absolutely in control of how much wash you leave and where you leave it as I say, the downside is that it does take a little while. Like all things though, it becomes quicker with practice. It has to be said though, if you're uh, applying wash on something like a 135th scale tank using this method it just takes absolutely ages as another uh, as another time when using using the best brushes is probably not the best idea um, but by the same token, as I said, the brushes do need to be able to hold a point, otherwise it won't really work. It becomes too general. So there you go. That's the few few different methods of pulling this wash off. Uh, another one, which I'll show you on this, because there's a bit more wash here and a bit less detail required. So what I tend to do here is introduce the cotton bud to the thinner and roll it off on the towel. So again. 
the cotton bud's not soaking wet it's there there's enough that there's enough there but it's not soaking if it's too wet it will pull all the wash off in no time flat and then blend the part again but this time using the cotton bud so it's much quicker much much quicker much much easier but clearly with fine finely detailed small parts um, the finesse isn't there with this this method but I use all of the methods depending on what I'm doing I don't just use the paintbrush method I don't just use the cotton bud sometimes on the outside of a model shock horror I even use tissue As long as you don't rub too hard, the wash is always going to stay in those recessed areas. And there you go. Now that detail all of a sudden just stands out so much more. Not only that, we've just slightly dirtied everything and you can, by layering up the washes, doing different colours, different layers, uh, you, can, you can start to bring in weathering and dirt and shadow effects quite happily using these methods and, and only what I've showed you, nothing else. There we go, I think that'll do for now. I'll finish this wash off, uh, do a little dry brush, um, and I'll come back to you with a bit more construction in the next instalment uh, of the CR42 Luftwaffe edition holiday build from me, Jen, at Genesis Designs and Model Craft. So for now I shall go, take care of yourselves everybody, it's nice to catch up, and I'll see you next time. Genesis out.